would like to take this opportunity to invite uh, an amazing expert in this particular conversation we're having today. He's the son of Africa. Uh, he is an African. He identifies himself as an African who is here to speak to us today about the future of money. Please help me welcome the one and only Michael Lawa. How many of you these all today are the inspired as a Kenyan? Yeah. As a Kenyan? Yeah. Your hands up. How many people here in these all today are identify themselves as Kenyans? Alright, yeah. <laughs> How many people in these all today identify themselves as an African? Yes. Alright, okay. okay. This conversation started 10 years ago. A British friend of mine, we, he asked me, where in Africa are you from? I said, I'm in Africa. I'm from Africa. He said, there's nothing called Africa. Where in Africa are you from? And then I tried to educate him. And if an European comes to Africa, they will say, I'm an European. I don't question them. Where in Europe are you from? If a Romanian comes to Africa, he will say, I'm an Erodian. If a Polish comes to Africa, they will say, I'm an Erodian. And none of us question them, where in Europe are they from? So I refuse to be questioned, where in Africa I'm from. Yeah. I'm a proud African. Yes. And anywhere I go on the soil of Africa, I identify myself as an African. Yes. And there's a reason for that. Because when you go back to history, when the map of the world was designed, there's a little wonderful map that was designed and called Africa. And in the heights of the world today, as long as you have my color, people identify you mentally as an African. And for Africa to grow, we need to remind ourselves and step back into the shoes of the likes of Dr. Nkrumah, the likes of Nelson Mandela, who refused to be identified by a country, but instead, identify himself as an African. Because the collective growth of Africa relies in all of us identifying with the identity that the world has given us instead of fighting. That's just a deviation to what we're talking about today. Uh, in case any of you come to speak to me after the event and ask me where I'm from, you already got an answer to that. I'm an African. <laughs> Everywhere I travel to the world, there's always this little hard part that I will show the email. And there's always different names out. If there's then I shine the room tonight, please forgive me. There's always a black little girl that will show on the TV. And the face is always that of a PT. I'll see this little Aisha. She's gonna go to bed tonight hungry. Please find the donation so that she doesn't go to bed hungry. I refuse to be an African that has been pitied. I want to be an African that's standing at the top of the world. The research, get my information, collaborate, and innovate ideas that will build the next future of Africa. I refuse to be identified as an African that is poor, hopeless, and has no future. And that's the reason why all of us in this room today should send this message back to everybody in every cause of Africa. That this time we mustn't miss this wave. It is very important. And that's why this evening you'll be seeing me speaking passionately from my heart, because this is very dear to my heart. I'm part of history. When the internet wave started, which is the third wave that led back to the boom of e-commerce, I do not have the resources. I was not part of that industry. But this block, fourth wave of blockchain technology, tonight, for this I won't be talking about cryptocurrency. And the reason why I won't be talking about cryptocurrency is because I love to talk about it on the Lenin Protocol, the technology itself, and the reason why all Africans should care about it. Because when the internet boom started, 
our government, because they were not educated, the policy makers, they were all scared, and we're sitting on the fence. What happens today? 80% of government servants are hosted, managed by either Cisco, Hydea, Microsoft, Amazon. There is no single multinational cloud storage company owned by an African, developed by Africans, and patronized by Africans. And that's the reason why we should all care about this fifth wave. Because this fifth wave is so crucial in human history that the people that create control about the world do not need to come into your country to enslave you. A nation can be enslaved remotely. And that is the reason why, as an African, we should all care. I will be talking about the future of money this evening because I love money. And I'm proud to say that because when I was growing up as an African, I grew up in a Christian family. Where is the taboo to talk about money? But then I questioned myself at the age of 11 when I started my entrepreneurial journey. I've been with book not to talk about money. But yet I grew up seeing my parents stressed about money. So if something is stressing you and giving you a sleepless night, I think that you, you should at least try to know about that thing that is giving you that sleepless night. And that's the reason for the last 15 years of my life I've studied about money. And that's how I got to go come into the blockchain industry as well. And tonight I will not be using the name money, I'll be using the word value. Because money is that thing. The source of values. Money is that thing that distributes values. Money is that thing that, as humans, we ascribe value to it. So, literally, you all agree with me money can be anything. Because in this room tonight, if Nelson Mandela is still alive and his signature is put on this paper, this paper can be auctioned and people will buy it. Why? Because Nelson Mandela was signing that paper ascribed value to that paper, true signature. And that's the reason why, for those of you that have had a conversation with me, we need to begin to think from the perspective of value. And to me, money is value. From gold to fiat, from fiat to mobile money, thank God for Kenya, you make the whole world the least in Africa. And I'm really proud of you tonight. Because most of my friends will say something I'm really not going to pay them. When MPS has started, nobody was paying attention. But I'll tell you today, the revolution that MPS has started in Kenya, the whole world is actually studying it, they're embracing it, but they're giving it a new name. Because they do not want to be identified that that solution came from Africa in this safe soil of Kenya. There is a bank in the UK called Northwest, which is a bank I use. When they stole that concept of all our money, they brought it to the UK and then they repackaged it and said, you can send money to your friend with their telephone number. I think that is mobile money, right? Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't call it mobile money. They repackaged it, they marketed it like a solution that was developed in Europe. No. That solution was developed in Kenya, and Kenya is in Africa. But because of the stereotype that we are to be pitied, we are poor people, people should not listen to us. Those perceptions are key, and those perceptions still matter. And that's the reason, as an African, if you tell the world that I want to build X amount of solution, you will struggle to raise money, you will struggle to raise capital. It's not that your idea is not valid. It's just that the perception against you will not let them trust that you have the mental capacity to build what you promise to build. And that's the reason why we all must care about money. And I hope I end up my presentation this evening that in this fifth wave, the giants of Africa will not lose out in this race. And when I'm talking about the giants of Africa, I'm talking about every individual of us in this room tonight. Because I refuse to be a servant. I start talking the shoulders of giants that have lived before me to say, this is our time. This is a revolution. And like our speaker before me said, 
If our government, and this is a plea to government in Africa as well, if our government refuses to, to help us innovate and build solutions to the problems that we're facing, what will happen? The West will build these protocols, they will build these solutions, and then they will come and sell to us in billions. And what continues? Poverty will continue in the same circle it always been. That's the reason why we're not us here. The one man of money is changing. Oh, we have to. Before a person came to Kenya, to a labor in Kenya, money makes paper, right? But today in Kenya, when you're talking about money, the first thing people talk about is the person. So that is to tell you there's something changing in the pattern at which money moves, in exactly what we define as money. And as those definitions and patterns are changing, we all must pay attention because it matters, it affects your life. Poverty, don't be lied to, and I stand to say this, and I stand to be questioned. Poverty was man-made and was created. It's an institution that is well financed. <laughs> And that institution is to control and subject the minds of the people to pull them against each other. Because when people come together and begin to think and collaborate and think about solutions, things will begin to change indeed. And that concept of collaboration and partnership is the future of what I'm here tonight to talk to, to talk about. There is poverty in the land. Tokenization can help bridge the gap and create wealth for the nation. When Nikola Tesla started the experimentation of electricity, I'm very sure in that particular year, people thought he was mad. Some people think he was crazy. When Nikola Tesla started saying we can transfer energy from one location to the other without necessarily needing any metal connected to each other. People thought it was insane. But today, how, how many people in this room use Wi Fi? <laughs> Everyone in this room use Wi Fi, right? So I'm very sure Nicola says that wasn't, wasn't as crazy as we thought in those days. The word change is not good for people, the word change is an individual. It's the ability of that individual to sell that to other people, to collaborate together, that makes that change become a substance. And that substance becomes value. And that value becomes transferable. And that is all about money. We need to begin to re rethink what money is. Because what we have 10 years from now, I'm just trying to be conservative, is going to be internet of everything. Today, there is nothing virtual we can do without electricity. 10 years from now, with a combination of AI, Virtual reality, IoT, and blockchain. We're going to have internet of everything. And the internet will become what electricity is today. And the economy of the future will function on tokens. And this thing is not a new concept. It's here already. Because Visual Mastercard, for those, for those of us that have bank cards here, Visa Mastercard, they have been market to us in Africa as a bank, but actually they're not banks. They're just an association of switch companies that transfer payment information between different banks to the other. But what these guys are using is still the same process of tokenization. And the information is right there. The EMP technology, which is the financial encryption of your information on a plastic, is not a new concept. Because by the time I go to my ATM machine and it's not my ATM card there, something is going on. I'm exchanging my token for fiat. There's an exchange of value that is going on between those, that particular plastic that I call my ATM card and the ATM machine, which is an exchange. And what the ATM machine is doing is confirming if my token is valid on a centralized system. Also, by Visa or Mastercard or whichever switch company or into switch as you have it in Africa. So it's not a new concept. 
What blockchain has just brought is just a hybrid concept of tokenization. It's not something new. It is something that you use every day, you interact with it every day, but the challenge is, and that's one thing I love about English, they have a very smart way of giving different names to one single concept. No offense, in case this video is being shared to anywhere in the world, I believe in free economy. And what I'm saying is, it is a time for Africa to stand up and create its own free economy. Yes. And the only way we can do that is to leverage on the power of technology. When the first revolution started, which was the, me the, me the, me the mechanical revolution, Africa will base out of it. Because we're sleeping. We're too superstitious, like you rightly said. Oh, this is them, this is Illuminati, this is this. They give you different names, right? I remember the, the favorite verse of the Bible my mom loves so much. I hope she's not here tonight. Like that. Uh, she says, um, uh, by, 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 by playing together with the world is against God. Don't you think that concept is actually more the reason we point Africa? Because the concept of individualism cannot work and will, it is never worked. It is an open collaboration of like mindset that brings solutions that change the life of people. And that is why that is valid. Extend your ideas is valid. Making the idea become a visible solution it is valid. And that's the reason entrepreneurs know that you don't need, and I'm, I'm not being funny here, you don't need to go to mountains for 41 days to be wealthy. Find a problem and find a solution. Build that solution. It will come. It is not a new system, it's not a rocket science. It is, a, it is applied science. It is over and over and over. We, we tokenize all our own resources and make the world pay for it. And if this video is being shared and any of the policy maker in Africa is listening to this, Slide. This is also enlightening their brain and their mind to know that there is no reason why someone from Congo or a Congo government or Congolese government will be mining gold. Blockchain technology makes it possible to tokenize that gold and let the whole world bring money to buy that token. At the end of this slide, you all agree with me poverty is an institution. And we all need as an African, as a young African, stand up to it, educate our mind, and begin to educate everybody that will come across to. And that's the reason why I said I refuse to be any other thing in Africa than in Africa. Because that division is what has made us to get to where we are today. As you can see, I'm mixing that concept of money together with underlying problems. Because in business, is 90% psychological, 10% operational. And our colonial masters understood that and they play on that concept. They created a free economy, a free market. They created a system that enables values to flow and interchange with each other. But do you know what happened? They created what the concept of sovereign wealth fund for our own government. When the economy is growing, they tell you to put your resources together and save for the rainy day, right? And that capital leaves your country and most of other country. Capital flies, right? They use that capital that they like with your own sovereign wealth fund to build their own economy. But the moment that money is leaving your country to another country, they told you to save. You're transferring value from your own local economy into another man's economy. And that values will be transmitted back to that society through the concept of trickle down economics. So this is the time we need to educate our own policy makers, if they're watching this tonight, to tell them that there is no reason why a continent that controls 65% of total world resources can be poor. Something is mentally wrong. I hope in my time and in your time, we won't allow the world to recolonize. You can never skip that one, the last of them. To colonize Africa economically, Let's go to the next slide, please.
regularization of spouting. This time around, it's never putting chains on our neck. This time around, it's technological. Because I know in this room tonight, the developers, the future developers, the software developers, and in this room tonight, I'm reaching out to your heart. Africa needs you. It's not easy, it's hard, but we need you to begin to create solutions that solve the problem of Africa. Africa today as a continent has the most problem in the world. So where do you think blockchain adoption will come from? It's going to come from Africa. And the West knows that, and the race has begun to enter Africa. I start to say this to happen in this space for the last eight years. I've played at a very high level of it, and I'm talking here tonight as an insider. And the reason why I decided to come and live my life of luxury, to come and be part of this, is because if you all continue to think what's the day for me, Africa will continue to be what it is today. We all need to begin to think what is the need for all of us as an African. And that is what we need to create value. It is a system that work, not people. If Barack Obama will come to Ghana or Ghana or Nigeria or Congo today, no matter how dynamic it is, he will fail. Because the systems in place will not allow the flow of idea and value to the exchange. It is where we begin to know that technological solutions can enable us to build systems that mitigate risk and corruption. That is the time that we can begin to grow as a continent. It is not people that work, it is a system. And please, off record, and do not draw machine to the world indeed. That is a system that works, not people. Because when Donald Trump was elected as an American president, the whole world was panicking. But America never stops. The money still flows. Business equals as usual. If the worst president in Africa will go today to the UK, he has no choice. He will function. Why? Because there are systems in place that are built to checkmate excesses. As humans, we all have tendency to be arrogant. We have tendency to be egocentric. We have set tendencies to be corrupt. But the reason why those systems are not corrupt is because they've been put in place to checkmate those human excesses. So, you can hang me at the end of my presentation. I want us to make it as lively as possible. And that's the reason why I'm not here to motivate. I'm not a motivator. I inspire people to take action. Because by the time I promise that by the time I'm 70 years old, I don't want to give the same rhetoric my father gave me to my own children. I want to tell my own children I was part of that movement that made Africa and the black race to be proud of being black. Many developed nations of the world create wealth through speculative system. And I will permit me to explain that. When we move the way from fiat back, our gold back economy to fiat back economy, something was given best to. Every human that we're sitting down, we're all speculative animals. Everybody sitting down in this room today, we have tendency to gamble. Because we have tendency to multiply. It is it's a, it is a natural phenomenon that, that forms us part of us as human beings. If I have one single car today, I'm thinking next year, how can I buy a new one, or how can I buy a land and build a house? So as human beings, we have this nature and tendency to grow. And our tendency to grow will make us look outside our point of view to achieve more and get more. In psychology, my colleague Reed, and that's the reason why psychology is the most the interesting part of human psychology that nobody has been able to say, this is what they say. Greed and fear. As human, as long as we have greed and fear as part of our emotions, we will continue to speculate. And smart economies of the world understood that concept of human nature. They built a trade engine. Forex. Before blockchain started and cryptocurrency started, 
The smart economies of the world doesn't do anything spectacular. They leverage by creating different sports derivatives, future contracts, future bonds. These are common paper that people agree together and it becomes money. It controls world's economy. It makes people poor. These are all speculative engines. They give back today to what we call the outback economy. And up till today, people are still trading forex. And when they speak out with, um, before they said cryptocurrency is going to die. Cryptocurrency is not, it's not different to trading spots of gold because I'm not having that gold in my pocket. I'm only speculating on the value of the movement of that gold. And when you trade cryptocurrency, you do the same action that a financial or having capital assets manager is going to be on Wall Street. Speculating on what is not there. So our government should enable this our people to speculate. Because when we speculate, we create movement of values. Because values is when it goes from one person to the other. The person multiplies it and loses it, and the person wins. In the process of that speculative economy, you create different millionaires. Money is the currency, it has to move. Next slide. I love this slide so much. African countries by GDP. In as much as I love to give theories, it's always good for us to look at data. Let's look at what numbers is telling us. South Africa, 285.4 billion, followed by Egypt, followed by Nigeria, followed by Algeria, Morocco, Angola, Libya, Tunisia, Kenya, 229.4 billion, Ethiopia, Ghana, and Cameroon. This total GDP combined, how many more time? How many million do I have, please? Five, okay, let me run that. This total GDP combined in the states and African economy is enough to build economic boom of prosperity for the whole of Africans. There is no reason why a sovereign wealth fund should be leaving Africa. There is no reason why Africa should be begging for aids and grants. Africa is not poor. Africa is a rich continent that controls 65% of the total world resources. And if we embrace this new technology of tokenization, it's started already, it's not a rocket science. Sweden has gone totally, as of today, cashless economy. They want my own generation to thrive. I know some of them are scared of their retirement, but we'll be easy on them. Because this is not going anywhere. Blockchain technology is not going anywhere. South Korea was one of the poorest countries 10 years ago. Today, it's one of the fastest growing economy. And what do they do? The government one single person, like the young man rightly said, and I want to, I'm repeating most things you said because you make a lot of sense. He said, he proposed to the South Korean government to invest in internet. Ten years ago, South Korean government invested heavily in internet technology. Today, South Korea is not a poor country. Technology is very far vital to the future of mankind. When the internet of everything starts, African government should not be looking around for solution. Instead, African government can rechannel the Southern Wealth Fund to start a startup boom in Africa. We have brains, we have ideas. We can collaborate and co-create different ideas on the blockchain technology that will help the government, help them make more money, and help alleviate lots of people out of poverty. Next slide. Time to stop believing economic lies. The share of children living in relative poverty in the world. I love this data so much. When you look into this data, the share of children living in relative poverty, there is no single African country out of the four state countries. And the data source of data is our world in data. Time 
going to stop the living economic lies. Share our children living in relative poverty in the world. There is no single African country in the first 30. The its informations are there. Let's begin to challenge ourselves. So if they're telling you Africa is poor, no, Africa is not poor. What Africa is not doing is Africa is running away from the future that will come anyway, and it's refusing to innovate and invest in crazy ideas. Because the same way blockchain was a crazy idea 10 years ago, that the whole world today relies on block on the internet. If the same way blockchain is a crazy idea today, and 10 years from now we're talking about this, everything, internet of everything is starting. Microsoft is investing into it. Let our government stop and our people stop believing what international media are telling you. Begin to watch what they're doing. Don't listen to them. Watch what they're doing. They're telling you that blockchain is a scam. Cryptocurrency is a scam. And Goldman Sachs is allocated 10% of his resources to open an OTC desk trade. BlackRock, the great, the richest edge fund in the world, is actually looking into blockchain technology. Let's begin to educate our minds. And these are the people that will come and advise our own policy makers, our own government, to stifle this growth. Why? Because they know that the entire world economy relies on Africa. So the moment Africa begins to create innovative solutions, the whole world knows there is a problem. But we don't want it to be like that. What we are telling the world is we want to embrace this technology because we know it is Internet 3.0. In the future, identity will be digital. In the future, money will be digital. In the future, everything you do will be your face and your thumbprint. Your biometric and your face. And your phone as you have it today will form half of your entire life. <laughs> it's happened already. If you lose your phone right now, yeah. then how would you feel? I'd slap somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and let's look at data. In the whole world today, we have 3 billion unbanked people. Out of that 3 billion unbanked, Africa is only out 1.3. Over 57% of the unbanked in the world are Africans. So where is the problem? It's in Africa. So we don't need an external body to create solutions for us to solve our problem. We plead to our government, our policy makers, and the people, let us not just come and buy baseball and speculate. Let us begin to talk about those technology, on the latest technology that will affect and solve 80% of what the problem that we face today in Africa. Next slide, please. <coughs> Connecting the dots and making sense out of our present economic deficiency. There is an economic deficiency in Africa. After 15 years of living in Africa, I start touring Africa since the last six months. And the only question and conclusion I can come to is, I don't think there's nothing wrong with us. The only thing wrong with us is we don't believe in ourselves. That's the only thing wrong with Africa. We do not believe in ourselves. When the advanced economies are busy developing protocols, developing technologies, we are busy fighting about somebody is coming to take someone's woman from another country. <laughs> Let's educate our minds. How do we slave in colonial mentality? Because whoever owns the money controls the power. If today, this young man in front here owns one billion dollars. All of you in this room, even if you hate it, you want to be his friend. Yeah. That's how powerful money is. And that's why I said I love money. Because money gives you that confidence anywhere you go. Today, the street of Bayer, in coming to this event, there are loads of people that are in the street asking and begging for money. And it's not only in Bayer. Everywhere you go in Africa, people lie in the street and beg for money. In the continent that controls 65% of the world resources. Let's rise up. Let us wake up and know that it is possible. And that is the reason when I, I told the CEO of Cuba, I will be joining this thing and we will be taking this message to every corner of Africa. Because in the last five years, 
Africans have invested over $10.5 billion in different policy schemes. <laughs> and the most dynamic part of these policy schemes, I'll tell you. Let's even say we're smart enough. Let's even say it's those policy schemes are actually created by Africans. And different Africans play those policy schemes, right? Those money will remain where? In Africa. Technically, though, in the policy scheme, that money will create value. But the, the, the economic reality is $10.5 billion in the last five years in policy scheme doesn't stay in Africa. That capital grows wings and fly like an aeroplane out of Africa. And who will they use? They will use your people for yourself. Network marketing, right? Yes. Let's get out of it. Let's begin to think collaboration. Let's begin to think partnership. Let's begin to open our mind and expand our mind. That I love money, I want all of you to love money, but poverty is a bad thing. Because I wasn't brought up with money. But today, I can say, I can afford basic things that I want in life. And what scares me to begin to read about money since the last 15 years is my background. Because I remember I promised my nan and said, I'm going to liberate the whole of my entire family out of poverty. And that was the changing moment in my life. The moment you think enough is enough. And that's why I want to carry that message through QBS, through different of you, because QBS is just the next stage. QBS will need different African projects to innovate and create projects and create value on that exchange. And those things that will create those values are sitting in this room tonight and I'm challenging your mind. Think Africa, breathe Africa, let's create a money and wealth that flows within Africa. We need to stop, sorry, get too fast. We need to stop playing the world economy game. When Washington DC in 1776, when America was in independence, I'm going to recommend a book to all of you in this room tonight, written by a guy called Noam Chomsky. The guy was trying to tell the world something, but the world wasn't listening. And the message the guy was trying to tell the world was about Africans. How the world works. And when I said poverty was a system designed, it is true. It's an economic reality. When they designed the economic lies that we believe today, Africa wasn't meant to be on that table. But blockchain is not actually governed by these people, and that's why you and I should care about it. Because if we not, if we do not innovate, I want to see an African blockchain in my own time. I want to see an African developers developing projects hosting on an African blockchain. I want to see different governments in Africa hosting the entire nation as a colony on blockchain. Where two people transfer value through tokenization system on the blockchain technology. That's the future that I want to preach. And that's why I joined Kubernetes. And that's the future I want all of us to come together as Africa and believe that it is possible. Next slide, please. This is where we all started as you, as humanity started from trade by butter. And we evolved from trade by butter to gold. We evolved from gold to metal coins. We evolved from metal coins to paper money. Then we evolved from paper money to the creation of credit cards, which are the boom of plastic cards. Every player in the room say, Well done, guys. Kenya, okay, thank you. You guys give us mobile money. They can give you any name. Mobile money started from Kenya. Yes. And it's a far cry of Africa. As of today, what the world is still using is plastic cars. What you guys are using in Kenya and in Africa is electronic money. So who tells you that it's not possible in Africa? Because truly we're a step ahead of them, and this is reality. But they will repackage this thing and make you believe you're not actually the one that have done this and make it doubt yourself. That has to stop. And we will stop it, but it's a revolution. 
it is a revolution. Because today, some of us have walked in Africa as a free man. Some people, individuals, sacrifice their time, their life, our collective freedom. And if you and I begin to think I'm in Kenya, I'm in Ghana, I'm in South Africa, Africa will continue to be poor. We have to take that collective growth. And that's the only future that I see. And the next one is cryptocurrency. But I don't like to use that word cryptocurrency. I love to use that word tokenization. Next page, please. Next slide. Now let's look at the result together. There is over 100 billion US dollars waiting to come into African economy for the new digital money. Uganda is already playing with it. And I hope Africa and the Lord Alec join Nigeria so I can change it. So excuse me for that. Next slide, please. I believe, I believe that 10 years from now, as an African, you will not be using Microsoft's blockchain. It's happening already. Microsoft Azure. They're selling it as an enterprise solution already. It's happening. And what will they do? They will sponsor the media, advise our government to kill it, to sponsor legislation to kill that innovation. They will develop those innovations and they will come and sell as an enterprise package. Let's tell them that these young generations of Africans are refusing to bow down to those economic slavery. Because truly we can say we are free as Africans, but economically we are not free. Because those that even make our policy, those that actually rule us as leaders, does not even have the basic concept of what money is. There was a news in Nigeria by a politician that buries money in the ground. Can you see that madness? Yes. Yeah. You grow. <laughs> because that man doesn't understand the basic concept of money. Because money is something you grow. Money is something you multiply. And for it to multiply, it has to move. It has to exchange from one place to another. And that is value. And that value I believe in. That value I want to share with all of us. And that value I want all of us to take back up and think about it. Think about a problem in your community. Think about a problem in your local community. Write down that problem. Talk to all the members in your community, young members of your community. Decide together to create a solution to that problem. Put that problem together as a policy paper and begin to talk about it. When you begin to talk about a solution to a problem, I'll tell you one thing. When you begin to talk about an idea and begin to talk about it in the community, the whole community begins to believe in that solution. And when that those community begins to believe in that solution, by the level of knowledge, you transferring value. And what thing will happen, the more you talk about that solution, the capital needed to actually make that solution a reality will turn down. And the best example I've used for you today is a person. Because people don't believe it is possible until it's done. Africa, it is possible. I'm an African, I'm proud to be one. And anywhere I go in the world, any meeting, anywhere I speak or invited, I identify as an African, not the one to be pitied, but the one to stand as a giant that represents Africa and speak Africa, take Africa and let them know that we are the future. It's the curve. The curve has started from Africa and Egypt during civilization, and the curve has moved all the way from the Ottoman Empire. And that one was moved all the way to Europe from Italy, where the Fiat economy was actually created and co created by the Medici. And that has moved all the way to America, like 1776. Now, without the Fiat Bank economy, actually now being legalized through fractional banking, through American Reserve. And then the whole world comes together and says, We're signing this treaty that the whole world will trade today with US dollar. And that is the day we all sign our economic power away to one single country. Then our leaders were not informed, but now we are informed. And that's the reason the African Union, if they ever see this video anywhere, should know that the only number one way for Africa to rise is for Africa to take away 
the whole reliance on the US dollar and create its own inter Africa currency, and that is possible on the blockchain. There is nothing stop an African Union from having African currency, stay within Africa, transfer value within Africa, and people can use that for evidence, save money, and poverty will begin to be the thing of the past. Before I leave this place today, there's one thing I love to do is to win. And I hope you all still are winning. Thank you very much. Thank you.